what's up guys today we're going to look at another code wars exercise this one's called order of weight and it's a very realistic problem we've got a bunch of objects we want to sort them by weight but it's different units so how do we compare something measured in grams to something measured in tons well the answer is we're going to convert them all to one universal measurement which could be one of these or it could be something else we introduce and this is the kind of problem where you start and it seems like it's going to be simple but you hit a lot of snags and the question is do you address each snag with duct tape and hope that it works or do you find a way to step through them and get to the right answer while avoiding some of the problems I'm going to show the way I started and then we might rearrange and find other approaches but what I said was I really want to go return sorted array by a certain key I know that's going to be the last line of this function and we just have to make the key. Well, I decided to convert everything to grams because in the test data, it looks like grams is the most common, so that would be a lot of them staying the same. And it also looks like that's going to result in integers. If we convert everything to tons, then a lot of them is going to be 0. .000 whatever. So we like to have integers. I'm going to convert everything to grams. That means we need a function called grams and it's really going to be a big function, not just a quick lambda. It's going to take the weight, which is a string, and the string is always uh, some numbers and then g or kg or whatever with no space, no dot, nothing else. My first guess was to just look at the last character to just say like if weight negative 1 is g. Um, I like to do double quotes. I don't know why I accidentally did single. Then we'll return int of weight except the last character, so up to negative one. And then I'm going to do dangerous thing. I'm going to copy paste, which is nice, but it also means um, we have to change multiple things in each line. And if I miss one, it might be hard to see. So for this one, we're going to go two and look for the kg, and we're going to return um, everything except the last two times a thousand. And then on right here we're going to go look for t, return everything except the last one, times a million. So I think that's right. Now if I hit test, who knows, it might work. We might have some issues. Um, look at this. It turns out I was too greedy in the first line. This one, looking for the g's, caught all the g's but it also caught the kgs so when we're looking for grams we don't want to accidentally grab the kilograms even though they do have a g at the end I right here am trying to convert 100k to an integer because I took the g off that kg I could add some logic in this line to say well if the last one's a g and the second to last one is not a k or whatever that would have a problem if we ended up adding milligrams or something later and I really don't want to get into that so instead I'm gonna look for a different ordering if we do the kgs first then the G's are safe because by the time they pass through everything else is taken care of now if I hit test right now um, <laughs> we have exactly the same error because I made a mistake when I copy pasted these guys follow the same pattern because they're one character but this one has two and I don't just want the single second to last character I want second to last to the end okay I could take off the G here and look at just the K but then you lose that parallel it's nice to say these two are the unit and everything but these two are the number it would feel a little weird to leave one off or leave it unbalanced you know so if I hit test right now, I think it'll work. And if I hit attempt, I think all the tests will work. But this is pretty ugly. I would definitely like to improve before I submit this. Uh, for one thing, super repetitive. These three lines are basically the same thing three times in a row with just a few differences. And maybe there's a way to condense that. Another thing is they're out of order. I really hate having, you know, middle, small, big instead of nicely ascending or descending. Um, what I ended up doing when I tried this earlier today was uh, 
playing on the theme that I've talked about recently, which is I really like to have one return. I like to say return one thing in one place and avoid having to imagine going down a path and going down another path. Now, what I did really doesn't solve that, but let me show you what it was. I said return and then a big ternary expression, which is an if else kind of thing. So you say do this value if this, you know, or do this value if this. But, and these are okay. And this does end up making it quite a bit shorter. For the last one, I just returned the million without even checking for the T because it's an else, it's the last thing. And I do get to cut a lot. I do lose two returns and a bunch of colons, or actually three returns. So that's kind of cool. But this isn't really better. And uh, while it does work, let's make sure, it's not really that much better. It's still branching, even though the branch is hidden, kind of. And it's still doing the same stuff, even though slightly fewer words. I'm going to go ahead and hop to the solutions and we see what other people have done. And they've got a couple ideas in there that really avoid the ugliness. It's almost like this solution we see right here is duct taped together with a bunch of exceptions. And instead, we should find a way to confidently step right through to the answer and over these snags instead of through them. First, we see this person uses the ends with method. Nice, comes with strings, and it avoids having to check like brackets and colons and negative numbers. And you just say, does it end with this? Yes or no? Great. That's kind of nice. Not a big deal. But this one is really beautiful. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is what I should have been doing the whole time. So they do a couple of things. First of all, they keep it as a string until the last second. This is really nice. In my diamond video recently, I was talking about keeping it as an int until the last second and just converting it. And that idea of working with your type as much as you can instead of converting back and forth really helps to simplify things. So for this one, we keep it as a string throughout several steps instead of having int show up three times and having all these little uh, paths winding in and out. So that's great. The next thing is we do it in one pass. There's no if. Okay, That's really nice to imagine you're just stepping through these. You're, you're going around the conveyor belt and if the conveyor belt stops by a station that doesn't apply to you, that's fine. It just keeps moving. So what do we do? We replace the G with nothing. Great, because grams don't change the number and anything else, well, the information is not in the G anyway. Like the kilograms, the information's in the K, so the G is not needed. And then the K turns into three zeros, which means by the end it will multiply our result by a thousand because you'll be converting to an end. But we don't actually do the conversion, or we don't actually do the multiplication. We just fold that in to the int part that's already happening. And then we replace the T with six zeros which will times by a million. Now once you do that the int does multiple jobs. It converts to an int and it does the multiplication because now you have the right amount of zeros. And you know what I wouldn't be surprised if this is how the K came about in the first place if you're a scribe in the 1700s telling the king how many bushels of wheat we have or how many troops we have and you're too busy writing 40,000 you just decide hey can we put a K as a shortcut, especially if you have to like write five O's in a row and you want to make sure they're all the same and they're all lined up and it doesn't look weird when the fourth one is too big. Maybe it went that way. And then finally, you can just single line sort, use it, done. I really like that. I think we can learn a lot from this approach. The idea is to step through the problems as long as you can, no branches, no conversion, just do it. And then we can learn a little bit from the others. Like this person said K in X, which is nice because you don't actually care where it is. The K is the K. There's not other Ks we have to care about. But he's not saved from brackets and colons and all the ugly stuff. Still has to do it with that method. And if we scroll through a little bit, we'll see some slightly 
different versions with the dictionary or something else. But the real key, the real breakthrough, is the replace method chaining one, two, three before we ever think about integers. And that's awesome. Thanks.